In this video, we're going to install the Coinbase integration in Home Assistant so that we can monitor the crypto market. So if you're into cryptocurrencies and Home Assistant, stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. If this is your first time here, my name is Jeff. And here at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using smart home tech. Cryptocurrency is hot these days. And whether you just enjoy watching the show or you've already got a moon bag set aside, Home Assistant can help you keep an eye on what's going on with the Coinbase integration. Now, I'm not a crypto expert, but I do have a Coinbase account, and I figured it was about time that we play with the Coinbase integration. So, let's get into it. First off, you're going to need a Coinbase account. Coinbase is free, and I found it's a pretty good resource for learning about the different coins that are out there. If you aren't already signed up with Coinbase and you're looking to try it, use my link in the description, and when you sell or buy $100 worth of coins, you'll get $10. But either way, once you have a Coinbase account set up, you're ready to set up the integration. This integration uses the Coinbase API, which means you're going to need an API key to use it. The easiest way to get started is to head over to home-assistant.io slash integrations slash Coinbase. Here, you just click the user settings link, log in using your Coinbase creds, and enter your two-factor authentication. You have two-factor authentication, right? Anyway, once you've logged in, it takes you to the user settings API page. Click the new API key button. If you have two-factor enabled, you'll get another opportunity to use it. This little box hides that you're typing, but know that you are. Once you're authenticated again, you'll be presented with this screen. Here you get to set up what Home Assistant is going to see via this API. So you could go around and check each one of these individually or check all like I did. You can always come back and change this scope, so don't feel like you have to get this right at this point. For API v2 permissions, I suggest limiting it to just wallet accounts read. There's no reason this key should have permission to modify your account. Then click Create. You may get prompted to enter your two-factor authentication again, but then it will show you your API key details. Copy them someplace secure. You won't see them again, and you'll need them for the next part. This is a built-in integration, which means you can just head to Configuration and then Integrations. From here, click that blue Add Integration button in the lower right and search for Coinbase. When you click on it, you'll be asked for those API details. Enter your key and your secret key and click Submit. If everything was good, you'll get a success message. Click Finish. Now you'll need to configure the integration. So find the Coinbase integration in your list and then click the Configure link. Here you can choose which wallets and exchange rates to create sensors for. Once you've picked your favorites, click Submit. And now you should have some new sensors. For a wallet, you'll get a sensor that contains the number of coins you have along with the balance in native currency. For exchange rates, you'll get the current rate of that coin. Now that we have some sensors set up, let's create a quick dashboard so that we can monitor the market. For this demo, I just created a new page on my Lovelace UI and added some of the exchange rate sensors I configured using sensor cards. Now, this integration doesn't update in real time, so you'll need to take that into consideration. While this does give you a quick view into historical performance, don't expect to be able to drive your day trading efforts with this setup. But then again, we live in a smart home, so why do we want to look at a dashboard? Let's create an automation so that Home Assistant can let us know when to buy on the dip. To set up an automation, just head to Configuration and then Automations. I called this one Buy More XLM. For the trigger, I used Numeric State, and I want this to fire when the value of XLM is below 20 cents. Then for Action, we'll send a message to my mobile app with the message Buy XLM. Of course, if you don't mind getting into some YAML, we can make this message a little better by adding the current price. But to do that, we can't use the visual editor. So we have to drop into the YAML, and now we can set up our message to include the current price of XLM. 
Now, based on the frequency in which this integration updates these sensors, I'm not sure using the raw sensor value here is going to have much value. But we could use the statistic sensor to give us a little more context about what's going on. Unfortunately, you can't set up that sensor via the UI, so we're going to have to jump into our configuration files. Open up your sensors.yaml or your configuration.yaml if you don't already have a sensors.yaml file. If you're doing this in the configuration.yaml, make sure that you put this under the sensor colon heading. But if you're adding this to your sensors.yaml, then all you need is platform colon statistics. For name, give it something unique. I'm using XLM price stats. If you don't put anything in the name value, it's just going to use stats. Entity ID is going to be the name of your exchange rate sensor, like sensor.xlm underscore exchange underscore rate. By default, this sensor looks at the last 20 historical values, as long as your history goes back that far, that is. For this, a good sample, though, might just be two or three, because we want to see the most recent change in value. Just take a moment to understand the frequency this sensor updates, then adjust the sample size as needed for your use case. Then restart. This sensor will give us a little more context about our price sensor, but the one that we're probably most interested in is change which is going to be the difference in value from the start of our sample and the most recent value, which if you left this at the default, which is 20, might not be that useful for this use case. Now that we have that sensor, we could set up an automation that notifies us of a rapid increase in value. For example, here's a quick automation I worked up. I set the trigger to numeric state. My entity to the XLM price stats sensor that we created the attribute we're going to look at is change, and I put it at above 20, which would be a huge increase. Just put the change value you want to alert on, and remember that this integration doesn't update every minute. So I suspect with crypto, there could be huge swings between sensor updates. Although 20 cents on XLM might be a bit unrealistic. Anyway, for action, just call the notify service of your choice, and give it your message, then save. And there you have it. Home Assistant can now track the crypto market. And you should be able to build some automations that let you know when to stock up on the dip or cash in and buy that Lambo. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.